Yes, sir. I am ready. Abhinav and Sudha, uh, can you take over? Yes, sir. Sure. So I will introduce the speaker. Yeah. Um, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sitara Seminar Series. Today we have here with us Dr. Sachin Shinde. He is going to present on design and optimization of drinking water supply utility to meet Jal Jeevan mission for empowering rural areas. Dr. Sachin Shinde is currently working as a research analyst at the Land Surveying and Geoinformatics Department of the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. He was also working with the Water and Power Consultancy Services um, under the Ministry of Jal Shakti, New Delhi for about seven years in the planning and design of water resource projects. Uh, Dr. Sachin was recently awarded a PhD in Civil and Environmental Engineering from the Hong Kong Polytechnic University, Hong Kong. He was earlier awarded a Government of India Ministry of Human Resource Development Scholarship to study the management of water resources at the Indian Institute of Technology, Roorkee. He was a part of numerous national and international projects to address water and power sector issues. He has published presented papers in several national and international journals and conferences. His specialization is in water resources and he's particularly interested in the hydraulic aspects of drinking water. On behalf of Sitara, I welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good evening, everybody. I feel happy to have a chance to present this seminar at the IIT Bombay. Today, I'm going to discuss the last year. Let me stop my video first. So. Uh, somehow this mission is related to the research expedition that I pursued at the Hong Kong Polytechnic University and uh, several other related components I dealt uh, when I was working with Ministry of Water Resources, uh, which is now known as Jal Shakti Ministry. And therefore, I have realized to share my experience covering some simplified methodologies which can strengthen this mission to achieve its uh, sustainable goal. The outline of this talk covers two important components of the water utility system. Uh, one is uh, water treatment and another one is water supply system. The methodology will be demonstrated followed by its application. Let's sense about the water we have on this globe. This particular dot represents all form of water on the earth. Only 50% of the liquid fish is available, in which uh, this uh, tiny fraction of 1% of the water is accessible through lakes and rivers. To increase this accessibility, share of, uh, uh, accessibility of the share of water, we are uh, exploring groundwater and oceans. The salination technology is mature enough to cope up this uh, requirement, but it has created an alarming issue by daily generation of hypersaline brine of 142 million cubic meters. Whereas uh, tapping groundwater has several other issues to meet uh, the water demand at its quality. India accounts for 16% of the population of the world and to serve the basic need of the water to this population, we possess only 4% of the world's uh, fresh water resources. Uh, considering various such issues, the United Nations came up with 17 goals to transform our world. Clean water is one of its prime goals because it uh, connected directly or indirectly with several other goals of sustainable development. Um, as you can see, uh, uh, the goal number six uh, um, is uh, connected with goal number three, goal number 12, uh, which is responsible for consumption and production, uh, and goal number 13 as well. Uh, so, um, even though it has a target to meet all these goals by 2030, the government of India, the government of India came up uh, with its mission to extend its reach uh, to the rural areas. And they targeted to achieve these goals by launching a Jal Jeevan mission, which is uh, expected to be completed much before the UN goals. Uh, this is a snapshot of the mission's website. The data reported uh, till uh, September 2020 for rural uh, tap connections provided, which is about 30%. And about 70% of the households are remaining for functional tap connection. 
In past one year of this mission, several states participated actively to fulfill the goal of the Jal Jeevan mission uh, by following the guidelines as framed by the Department of Drinking Water and Sanitation. As you can see, Goa is uh, uh, leading with 100% app connection. These guidelines uh, include institutional mechanism, infrastructural development, and financial planning. I'm going to discuss our infrastructural development guidelines, uh, which require reforms by implementing simplified design methodologies to meet the sustainable goal. For example, as you can see from this snapshot of the department website, the water facility can be modified to meet the drinking water quality standards. This is going to address several such issues related to water treatment distribution as well. My research work is uh, based on the research area of water utility, the qualitative and quantitative investigation uh, of the drinking water treatment process and uh, optimization of the water treatment are two major components of the research that I'm going to discuss in the exercise. I first uh, start with uh, uh, a water purification study by investigating the utility infrastructure by analytical modeling approach. After I decided to choose a treatment process of having manual And I found that uh, river bank filtration process needs a master It's a type of filtration that works by passing water through the banks of the uh, river, or it can be a lake as well. It is then drawn off by extraction well some distance away from the water body. The process may directly yield drinkable water or be a relatively uncomplicated way of pre-treating water for further purification. Uh, various processes are taking place uh, during a uh, filtration like uh, biodegradation, dispersion, uh, adsorption, chemical precipitation, temperature equalization are, are few to name as advantages. In this seminar, I'm going to focus on the disease causing pathogen. The distance of the well from the river is a crucial factor to meet the water quality requirement. As you can see, uh, the concentration of uh, the various disease causing pathogens varies from the distance to the placement of the pumping well from the river bank. More closer the abstraction point, more influence of the pathogen uh, has been observed in the uh, well. Numerical, analytical, and uh, uh, um, uh, mathematical approaches uh, are used to solve several problems arises in RDF design. However, uh, analytical solutions are more useful in the quick estimation of the concentration because of the simplicity of the input parameters and also because of the absence of numerical errors. Recently, many studies consider collector well due to the suitability for installing in the riverbank. Generally speaking, it is difficult to simulate the drawdown of water at collector well, um, especially analytically, um, due to its complex radial flow condition. Considering this difficulty, we developed an analytical solution to forecast the safe distance of the pumping well by simulating the hydraulic head and also by mapping the pathogenic concentration. However, uh, the uh, assumptions of straight line boundaries is added, which renders aquifer uh, of rather simple geometric form. The flow field were considered corresponding to the limiting or safe pumping rate, that is QP, for a well located at a distance XW uh, and various aquifer parameters like porosity, transmissivity, and depth of aquifer uh, were considered. In this study, a groundwater flow model was developed, which is based on the hydrodynamic equation and a pathogen transport model uh, considering uh, reproduction and decay. We call this model as a logistic function-based pathogen transport model, abbreviated as uh, LIFI Patram, or I will simply say it as LIFI. A flowchart as shown in this figure can uh, well demonstrate a proposed methodology to meet the WHO criteria for drinking water standards. Here, C0 uh, is the initial concentration of the pathogen in the river water, and its allowable concentration was chosen as per the drinking water policy standards of WHO. The required number of log cycle reduction, uh, that is N, in, in the concentration of pathogen was determined from the specific value of decay rate, that is lambda. 
and uh, reproduction rate that is r uh, and the corresponding travel time trr by which the concentration will reduce from c0 to the who requirements uh, were ascertained uh, during this analysis based on the assessment of the travel time that is trr and uh, the safe distance of the pumping well that is xw uh, was computed to test the developed model uh, this data was used uh, from the bank filtration site located in new zealand the analysis was performed for both steady and unsteady flow condition. Uh, now, uh, uh, or this chart, the elimination rate constant uh, and uh, time to reduce the pathogen concentration by seven log cycle in groundwater is uh, uh, shown here. And uh, about uh, choosing equally pathogen, its survival time is highest, that is 310 days in comparison with other concerned pathogen. The, uh, the time required for pathogen to reduce by seven log cycle is a uh, term here as survival time. Therefore, this study specifically used E. coli, which has maximum survival time during the water passage in bank filtration. The travel time under steady and unsteady flow condition was calculated for a pumping well located at a distance XW from the uh, river boundary. Corresponding to the pumping rate QP and uh, its uh, distance XW, the correlation between drawdown at the well point and the related travel time was computed as uh, uh, shown in this particular table. The results obtained uh, for the uh, unsteady state uh, would uh, further converge to the results uh, that are obtained uh, for the steady flow condition. Therefore, mm, uh, this analysis uh, shows that the equilibrium radial flow, that is steady flow condition, can be confidently applied to, uh, to find the safe distance and safe withdrawal of the pumping well as well. The water instant uh, uh, over here, uh, what I'm uh, trying to show you is the water entrance velocity from the river to the pumping well, uh, and it's uh, found to be very large at the well boundary whereas the velocity was found to be very near to zero at the cone of uh, depression. Uh, I mean to say at the age of the cone of depression. During this particular transition zone, the water flow velocity follows the train similar to a slow sand filtration process. The variation of log cycle reduction uh, with the distance from the river boundary for various travel time of water after the onset of pumping is represented by this plot. The linear part of the graph indicates that the dynamic equilibrium condition in these particular specific zones has been attained for the solute transport, which uh, helped to decide the safe distance of a pumping point away from the pathogen carrying river for seven log cycle reduction. The concentration was found to be decreasing with the distance due to uh, uh, decay and dispersion of the, um, the bacteria. What is significant to observe is uh, the analytical element method based life I model could find out the optimum location of the pumping well and therefore it is applied to various field problems. Another situation I have addressed is uh, flooding condition and for this scenario I have considered an uh, infiltration gallery installed um, um, at the river bank instead of the pumping well which I already discussed. Um, it has been observed from the field studies uh, and experimental methods that the water quality changes dramatically during the flood condition. Despite uh, several controlling measures of RBF, um, shock load in the river often triggers the increase in the concentration of the pathogen uh, at the abstraction point. Uh, therefore, um, they require a change in the design to the traditional approach so that the water supply will be uninterrupted even during flooding condition. Also, considering the excessive demand fulfillment for the cluster of villages, uh, uh, infiltration gallery is uh, proposed to meet the design requirement. Uh, this is uh, another uh, snapshot from, from the same uh, mission website uh, where the um, abstraction point has uh, shown inappropriately, I must say. Uh, an infiltration gallery is a horizontal conduit uh, for collecting infiltrated water by gravity flow. The influence of pathogen will be low if the infiltration gallery is uh, placed some distance away from the river. During the lean flow period, the river receives water from the aquifer. But uh, during the passage of the flood wave, the property of water entering the gallery is affected by river water quality because uh, pollutants from the watershed generally enters into the stream. 
Consequently, to um, the river stage rise, uh, the rise in the water level at a distance x w um, at, at a, a time t after the onset of the stream stage was used to formulate this particular application. Uh, here, um, uh, ERF is uh, an error function uh, which is used to uh, is used to minimize the uh, the computed error value to a very little to zero and uh, sigma is a step rise in the uh, river stage. Uh, the travel time has been computed considering the earliest arrival of pathogen uh, from the river boundary to a calorie. Uh, I think I missed one particular thing. This, okay, um, I, I missed something there. Uh, anyways, uh, we had uh, an ambiguity uh, while framing this particular uh, analysis. Uh, we had an ambiguity over E. coli uh, pathogen survival time. Uh, we came across recently a study at the University of Georgia and published in the Journal of Food Microbiology and found that uh, E. coli could also survive in the soil samples for uh, around 154 to 200 days. Therefore, various parameters were considered in such a way that near about 200 days of the survival time can be ascertained. Um, so this particular equation, as you can see, is estimated to use uh, the time required for the travel of water to an infiltration gallery. From the plot, the distance required for 10 log cycle reduction in E. coli concentration was found to be around 27 meter. Furthermore, one of the widely used model of Harvey uh, is uh, tested to compare our analytical findings. Their model includes uh, hydrodynamic dispersion, uh, filtration, first order GK of pathogen, and uh, also retardation. Uh, of the solute transport in saturated uh, homogeneous porous media. Uh, for this particular analysis, uh, same parameters were used uh, as that of the LIFI model from the previous slide. Um, the results plotted as shown in this graph um, say that for 10 log cycle reduction in the pathogen concentration, the same distance required is about 28 meter, which is very close to the LIFI model uh, estimation. So uh, this is how the uh, finding of these analyses uh, are presented to uh, know a suitable location of uh, an abstraction point in the riverbank filtration facility. Uh, for this uh, analysis, uh, an analytical model was developed uh, which coupled hydrodynamic analysis and uh, logistic function to determine the log cycle duration of E. coli pathogen. The model is uh, based on the explicit finite difference scheme, which is used to estimate the change in pathogen concentration during steady, uh, steady state, uh, unsteady state, and stream uh, stage rise condition. Uh, based on the river water quality, the maximum and minimum yield limits of pumping well were influential parameters and uh, therefore must be selected properly. And it is observed that the safe distance and uh, yield are governed by the logistic function as proposed here. Uh, by analyzing various conditions of uh, flow, a uh, steady state flow can be conveniently considered for the design. In this analysis, it was also observed that uh, under a dynamic equilibrium condition, the variation of log, uh, log cycle reduction of the pathogen was linear with respect to the distance. This uh, helped to decide the appropriate location of the abstraction point in the planning of riverbank filtration project for drinking water supply. It's important to say that uh, AEM based uh, LIFI model could find out the optimum location of the pumping well and could therefore be applied to the various field problems by incorporating different properties of the aquifer and source water quality. This is how the drinking water problem of a rural area can be addressed efficiently without any additional water treatment cost. Uh, let's move to the another component of uh, water utility system. This uh, deals uh, with the cost optimization of uh, uh, water distribution network. I would like to take back to the RBA facility here. Uh, the pump water is supposed to be distributed uh, for uh, drinking purposes as uh, shown. Uh, here the distribution network can be of any shape and size. The network is said to be least expensive uh, whose optimized design solution fulfills nodal demand through the shortest route. 
generally uh, optimization is a notion of obtaining optimum solution and so maximum benefits for those uh, who do not um, have an idea uh, what does uh, the distribution network comprises here is a hypothetical layout of the various uh, functional components uh, that is uh, um, of the pipes pumps wells Times nodes uh, represented with um, different colors with the name of the uh, alphabets, uh, colors of the alphabet as well. I skip um, this um, historical background of the design philosophy, but I would like to mention here that the design of network often fails to maintain the required level of efficiency due to the underestimated hydraulic design. Over a period of time, design optimization has been improved to meet uh, various constraints. In the design consideration, it is uh, also important to address the, the dilemma uh, for simplicity versus accuracy and also to the priority as well. Um, while uh, doing so, some of the crucial challenges uh, are also required to give a special emphasis so that a functional tap water system will reach till the end user by fulfilling the cost optimization constraints. So far, traditional probabilistic approaches uh, of nature-inspired evolutionary algorithms uh, were followed extensively, but uh, the difficulty in solving a large network was observed with the computational exhaustiveness. Therefore, a research gap was explored for a new technique of optimization that converges faster to a global solution. Uh, more than 40% of the design optimization articles were um, a key input for other related studies like operation, expansion, rehabilitation, etc. Uh, out of which uh, about 50% of the articles consider single constraints. 60% of the articles use only one decision variable and about 70% of these design articles were based on single objective optimization. I also followed the same trend to compare this analysis uh, by developing a simulation optimization model for a single objective that is nature cost. It is, uh, it is done by uh, choosing a pipe sizes uh, as a decision variable and uh, followed by hydraulic constraints uh, like velocity, pressures, etc. The, um, the optimization is uh, explored by an algorithm framework and it is uh, externally supported by the EPANET hydraulic solver. Uh, about EPANET, it, uh, it is a widely used uh, simulation software by US EPA that models the piping network uh, to determine the flow regime. Uh, let's uh, move to um, another... Um, uh, Sorry, I, I, okay, the slide sickness is, okay, sorry. Um, yeah, so um, I, I, I take back to the, uh, means, uh, the historical background again. Uh, in the early era, deterministic methods were extensively used uh, due to the improvement in stochastic optimization theories like uh, genetic algorithm, or uh, we also say GA, uh, with about 84% of the articles are still dominant in practice, uh, in which the network uh, was formulated as a nonlinear mixed integer problem. And uh, GA allowed uh, various uh, modification in the design procedure that increases their efficiency by applying uh, probability operators configured to uh, global search. Uh, now, uh, let me bring something about a simple benchmarking algorithm or SDA. Uh, even though uh, GA firstly created the idea of using uh, coded individuals to get the optimal solution via intelligent enumeration, it has several limitations. The probabilistic approach confines uh, the computational boundary based on a strict mathematical judgment, whereas uh, SDA's uh, search is based on operational rules. Uh, probability equation and mathematical formulations uh, altogether. The individuals within the solution space learn from each other and emulate a good example as per their organizing tactics. These uh, organizing strategies of SDA help to achieve synergy coexistence uh, of exploration and exploitations by relaxing, uh, by, by relaxing probability-based hidden rules. 
Uh, considering such a unique advantage, a modified approach is introduced uh, named as CBANET for analyzing a network problem and it is uh, supported externally by EPANET because uh, this is required because the algorithm framework has limitations to handle hydraulic parameters. Therefore, a joint simulation optimization uh, CBANET model is proposed. and. Um, this uh, um, uh, this model uh, with the application is, illust is illustrated with a, a two loop network and a three loop water distribution case. The optimized uh, solution uh, were assessed uh, considering cost as an objective and pipe diameter as a, a decision variable. The network parameters are initialized to a layout for a minimum head at uh, Tima nodes. Uh, in addition, length of the individual pipes and its diameter with associated cost are also considered, whereas the hydraulic heads and pressure are simulated uh, externally by EPANET. Uh, a small size of a two-loop uh, network or TLN is used here to test CBANET. Referring to this layout, all these eight links are of uh, 1,000 meter, uh, meters each. 14 discrete diameters uh, sets are available for each pipe. So therefore, a source space, uh, which is consists of 14 to 8 design combinations are available for optimization. At uh, each, uh, each node, uh, EPANET handles demand and uh, pressure as a decision variable um, implicitly, whereas uh, CBANET works explicitly over eight pipes for the optimum network. The graph of convergence shows uh, CBANET uh, work um, took uh, uh, only three seconds for 100 iterations. Few trials uh, were uh, performed within the ecological system, uh, which involved initial solution, uh, number of uh, niche population, the number of individuals within the niche population, and uh, maximum iterations. Uh, now, here I consider um, the uh, the uh, numerical um, comparison. Uh, numerous authors have also assessed the solution for uh, TLN uh, using a diverse optimization techniques uh, as uh, listed here. Um, there are total, I could list uh, around 15 or 14 or so. Uh, CMANIT also explored a similar solution much within 100 iterations. Comparing uh, results with uh, other technique, uh, it is evident that the proposed methodology uh, has performed efficiently because of its uh, strategic approach to locate a global optimum solution. Now, uh, until what I have discussed, supply system to a single village, but when the same supply system adopted to a cluster of villages, the changes in design for cost optimization increases while meeting the hydraulic constraint. Uh, if um, you remember my slide of the drainage gallery, uh, this system of water intake can be implemented to cater the demand of several villages follow, um, following the network layout uh, of the supply system. Therefore, um, I now discuss, uh, uh, therefore I now discuss here the case of a large size problem, the three loop network. Uh, it is uh, also known as uh, a Hanoi network as well. Uh, it has six five diameters of 34 links. Therefore, a huge solution space uh, that is 6 to 34 design combinations are available for optimization. A similar methodology has been um, adopted uh, from the previous example of TLN to assess the optimal solution. And uh, we explored a design cost uh, of uh, around $6 million, which is much within 600 iterations. Even though the SBA framework is in its initial stage of development, uh, Excellent results uh, have been achieved in comparison with other algorithms and their modified variants. It is observed that the hydraulic design of the water distribution networks uh, using uh, SBA is a promising alternative in combinatorial optimization, uh, which is successfully demonstrated by the CBANET methodology here. Uh, I would like to um, draw your attention to uh, this, uh, the solution obtained by the CBANET methodology is slightly higher than the self by Isuki for the three loop network, whereas the similar cost was observed for a small uh, size TLN network. Another observation is from the, uh, the GIMP study. Um, 
uh, who evaluated the cost with the lowest iteration uh, for TNN. But uh, uh, when it comes to a larger network uh, for a cluster of villages, Simonet converges faster than all these listed algorithms. So, um, yeah, uh, about the findings. Uh, in the domain of um, water utility planning, new methodologies should be incorporated to ease the hydraulic design. Sivanek methodology presented here was verified and the results indicated that it is the most robust method in handling discrete constraint optimization problems, wherein the global solution can be achieved within a few iterations. This is due to an intelligent exploration and exploitation strategy, which uh, accelerated convergence. That's uh, why the CPU time for evaluation is very less. As compared with GA and its variants, uh, no penalty to various constraint, nor uh, parameter tuning is required even to a large size network, as we have seen. I would like to support this finding by citing uh, the latest article by Berge et al, uh, in which the global performance review of metaheuristic ranked this model as the best with maximum evaluation efficiency of 78.2%, which is highest among um, other optimization models. Therefore, SDA is a promising alternative in combinatorial optimization that is uh, well demonstrated by Sivanet approach. Uh, now, well, we are at the end of uh, this seminar. Uh, I have tried my best to appraise uh, various issues involved in the sustainable design of a water utility system by proposing the LIFI and um, the c and model. When it comes to um, a rural area, it is difficult to take care of various treatment and maintenance issues. Therefore, some design interventions that are addressed here can make the water utility system independent of human interference, either for treatment or for assured supply. I emphasize the um, application-oriented research. Uh, therefore, I have also applied for a project to, to participate into the Jal Jivan mission. So um, I am grateful to Professor Anand Rao and IIT Bombay to give me a chance to present this uh, research project. With uh, this uh, list of my published article and a few manuscripts, I end my presentation here. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Dr. Sachin Shinde. Uh, so uh, we can go around the room and see if there are any questions. Uh, we'll first uh, try to have questions from the students, uh, and then if not, then we'll go across faculty members. Okay, so, okay I have switched on my uh, video. I think you can see me as well. Yeah, we can see you. Okay. you. Yeah. So the students can uh, raise hands and ask questions, or you can type in your question in the chat box, and Sudha can read it out. Yes, Neetu. Uh. Uh, hello, hello, sir. Um, thank you for this uh, presentation. So, I have uh, two questions. So, firstly, I want to uh, yeah. know that how yeah. efficiently the RBF system. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, your voice is getting break. I just switch off my camera once again so that. Oh, sorry. Okay. Mm, now, uh, can you please uh, repeat your question again? Uh, yeah, so um, let's say now, can you please confirm my voice? Hello, now I can hear you well. Please proceed with your question. Okay, okay so my question is how efficiently this RBF system can remove the non uh, organic pollutants? Like you mentioned about pathogens also, because Hello, Nitu. Hello, Nitu. Uh, I what I could. Uh, um, Sorry, uh, I th I think we lost her. She she had some connection. I, I have to put it in the chat actually. Yeah, yeah. The question. Any other question? So, uh, actually, taking this is a bakul. Uh, I think Nitu wanted to ask what happens to the organic pollutants. 
and also the other dissolved uh, substances i mean you you have talked about the pathogens that is one uh, part of it yes but what happens to the increasing nitrate uh, the organic yes. uh, you know uh, 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 how is that, that taken is care the, of that yeah. okay uh, yeah i i understand the question uh, but um, uh, i uh, specifically uh, emphasize emphasizes on the e coli pathogen uh, yeah, in the uh, so this is the system uh, as you can see so i emphasize on the only pathogenic concentration which is uh, you know related to the hygienic conditions uh, especially to the uh, rural areas where the you know um, the expenditure to the hygiene are not so much uh, means uh, so much uh, uh, so much enough so uh, in this study in this study only the uh, pathogens are considered not the other nutrients or some other chemical uh, precipitation or any other redox condition is considered the yeah, while the study take care of the pathogens what is your take on the um, uh, way the uh, rbf function while looking at uh, uh, the dissolved pollutant what is your take on that hello did you hear the question Hello, am I audible to everyone? Yes. Now you're audible now, but there was this period of silence. So anyway, just go ahead. Yeah. Did you get my question, ma'am? Can you please uh, 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 repeat yeah. your question? Yeah. We are. We understand that you looked at E. coli, yes. uh, and you looked at basically pathogen uh, removal, which you feel is one of the most important pollutants for uh, I mean contaminants mm -hmm. in the rural setting. but with increasing mm -hmm. use of fertilizers and use of other chemicals so what how does rbf function what is your take on that what is your uh, yes madam okay. that is also uh, with uh, various studies have um, also demonstrated that uh, uh, these uh, um, uh, the chemical of uh, the fertilizer chemicals and uh, other uh, like uh, organic substances uh, and some the uh, the uh, the uh, the nutrients you know which uh, in the uh, present in the water that are also taken care of um, uh, very effectively during the tank preparation so um, so as uh, um, as you can see uh, this particular uh, reference from uh, madima ital uh, she have uh, you know uh, clubbed uh, with uh, the uh, bacteria along with uh, the nutrients uh, so i only focus the bacteria but the other one is the nutrient also uh, parallelly follows the same particular graph so that is also efficiently controlled and taken care by yes uh shall I, we move to the next question uh, professor shah yeah uh, dr sachin uh, uh, you know the this large uh, river body systems and you know number of villages for example uh, one mm -hmm. after the other uh, draw uh, drinking water from from the uh, same river for example so sampling can become an issue so how does one decide uh, as a, as a, as a sort of you know a water uh, uh, you know or or hydraulic person as to where do we draw the water from you know because uh, uh, because if it is like you know it, it, it's 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 not uh, uh, so it's it's quite expensive to uh, dug a bore and then you know dig a bore and uh, sort of take sample so how do we decide for example let's say if my river is flowing Uh, say about uh, two kilometers from my village, you know, mm -hmm. and and from my uh, town or township, for example, and uh, I cannot uh, keep boring, for example, ten bore wells or something. How do we decide where should I take the sample? So, sir, for sampling, 
no need of taking any you know this uh, what we call observations well in between uh, you know the passage of the water simply one thing is required just Collect the river sampler, sample uh, from uh, you know somewhere in the stream of the river, and just uh, count the number of E. coli available over there, and just uh, uh, the logistic function model. What I have proposed here, it only need the river water concern means uh, the the E. coli concentration in the river water. So we need not to um, you know uh, look for the observations well that uh, you know how the sampling and other things are being collected. No, let's say it's like let there is an industrial pollution. Let's say I have some kind of a distilleries, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I have distilleries in you know particularly in the sugarcane belt in Western Maharashtra, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, number of distilleries were stopped because of the water pollution. So mm -hmm. uh, I have this uh, sort of you know pollutants coming from whatever you know like the uh, the the uh, the uh, effluents from the distillery into the river system. And, mm -hmm. and and where do I so is it again uh, sort of uh, you know because my groundwater is polluted, okay, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. before even it reaches to sort of the river my because mm -hmm. the way is sort of you know it's not a very uh, what you call a civilized way of letting mm -hmm. the outflow from the distilleries into the river you know there's no pipe system or something like that so mm -hmm. so in I, that situation yeah mm -hmm. you see what I I'm understand your yeah yeah. I understand your question. So, uh, if, uh, so before planning uh, the RDF system into such particular scenario, we have to observe the uh, means uh, the uh, the wa water samples uh, for let's say a period of uh, a year or two, and uh, then uh, we have to see the uh, how the concentration is varying. And uh, as we are talking about the sustainable means, uh, we are not going to involve any further additional support for the you know its maintenance or purification. So, what we do, we see the maximum concentration into the river water and this maximum concentration will be the design input for our river bank filtration facility so that's how we can we can uh, you know um, manage uh, this particular design of the placement of the rbf so my last uh, small question is uh, if you can go to your slide 36 yeah slide 36 mm -hmm. what is Y axis uh, here, uh, slide 36. Yeah, here. What, what is the Y axis? Uh, this is a uh, times these particular articles uh, um, are related to the stochastic method has been used. Your voice? Uh, uh, overall, uh, uh, sorry, so can you hear me? Can't hear you. So can you Uh, um, can you can am I audible to everyone? Yes, but better now, much better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, okay. you are audible. Okay. So uh, uh, I think uh, if uh, previously if I was not uh, means audible enough uh, related to the answer about uh, what is y-axis mentioned here. So then again, I'm uh, answering the same that y-axis is the number of uh, the uh, means uh, the article who use the uh, the stochastic methods related uh, research articles. Uh, hmm? Hello. Yeah, okay. I think we will talk uh, more when we sort of on Thursday. I think some time is uh, put. So that time I'll ask. I'll, I'll let others uh, pose uh -huh. questions based on your seminar because I, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of, uh, you know, uh, get uh, some, some, some of these principal uh, yeah. ideas here during our conversation. Yeah. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Sure, sure. Yeah. So there's a question in the chat box. I'll read it out. How efficient is RBF in dealing with inorganic and dissolved pollutants because in agriculture basin, the runoff may introduce pollution due to fertilizers. Mm -hmm. And the other question is an optimal arrangement of pipe network is important, but can you give some insights in the losses due to leakages, which constitutes around 20 to 30% of total flow? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the second question is in fact more relevant uh, over which I am in fact, uh, you know, having uh, the, uh, the project um, in uh, 
the uh, university. Uh, we are dealing with uh, the uh, leakage control uh, in the Hong Kong water systems, and uh, we are coming up, uh, coming up with the uh, new sensors arrangement and uh, some methodologies uh, how we can efficiently minimize it. But uh, when it comes to uh, our uh, our uh, Indian scenario, uh, either you talk about the um, metro cities or village area, yeah, leakage is a problem, and uh, that I have not considered into this particular design. So I'm sorry for that, but uh, that is their proposal uh, for the uh, the uh, design complex cities to uh, you know deal with uh, the the resilience and you know the. Uh, the other parameters. So, so it is there. Uh, uh, can, can you please repeat your first question, please? Yes. It is how efficient is RBF in dealing with inorganic and dissolved pollutants? Because in agriculture basin, the mm -hmm. runoff may introduce pollution due to fertilizers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that is uh, that is efficiently uh, handled by the RBF system. Uh, well, um, I have not uh, mentioned here, and the slide also is uh, uh, is uh, not here. But uh, the again, you know, one of the model study uh, what we refer into the RBF system is uh, uh, you know with the uh, various. Uh, 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 observation wells and uh, how the the various uh, parameters are getting reduced, uh, you know, to show the functionality and efficiency of RBF system. Um, uh, from this particular chart, you know, uh, uh, what available to show you for me, uh, show you, uh, show it to you, is uh, the uh, not only the bacteria, but the chemical fertilizers. Uh, either you talk about the, you know, uh, um, uh, there is a process called biodegradation, so that is also taking care. Of. There are the Redox conditions, you know, in the absence of in uh, so, uh, sorry, uh, there is a chemical precipitation as well, which is taking place uh, during the passage of the water to the flow. So, um, so there are there is there is a similar trend which has been observed along with the or like uh, the living organism and the inorganic substances as well. So this is how I can you know show it to you uh, that uh, yes, RBF is capable to taking uh, taking care of uh, those issues. So we have another question, whether yeah. such analytical and optimization based study can equally be applied to electricity distribution to dynamic energy distribution network, what may be the challenges in this scenario? Mm. Well, uh... I, uh, I, 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 I have never thought of that one. Uh, but, um, but yeah, this, this particular thing can be considered. And uh, I'm sorry, I, 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 I'm not able to frame uh, the answer for this particular thing, but uh, I, will, I will answer it to you later. Okay. Uh, do we have any more questions? Yeah, can faculty ask? Yes, sir, yes, sir, please. Uh, thanks, Dr. Shinde, for the talk. Uh, on slide number 11, you were saying mostly the function, it is a function of uh, distance from the uh, river bank. Am I correct? Yes, sir. What other things would you think is uh, important in the field? So the, the distance is uh, the, uh, the most uh, significant um, uh, parameter uh, we have uh, observed uh, into the um, the river bank uh, uh, filtration uh, system. Uh, other important parameters are the aquifer characteristics. Uh, it, it also involved uh, the the porosity of the aquifer, the toxicity uh, of the aquifer, and um, there are some uh, other. Uh, various compositions of uh, the uh, you know the uh, the the bed materials and um, the uh, the, um, the the uh, the sediment uh, which uh, uh, you know um, uh, at the at the bank of the river. So these are certain things which influence uh, the uh, the RBF facility. But the most important is uh, the this the safe distance, the specific distance is the most important. Right, but that is the under assumption that there is homogeneity and isotropic conditions existing but in the real world we know that uh, under the ground the aquifer characteristics is very different hydraulic conductivity porosity as you said and that could actually stop the movement of water to your borehole so which means the distance would not even matter so i uh, my concern is uh, above your distance the 
property of the material itself would be mm. a limiting or a um, enhancing factor. Okay? Yeah. So that is one thing which I am concerned about. The second thing is, yeah. you say that there's in this slide filtration, biodegradation, etc., etc. happens. Um, mm. And so, how long can this happen? If I put all these filtration, let's say it does work with distance, do you think for twenty years this filtration, biodegradation, absorption can happen, or what is the return period of the soil? Well, uh, one example we have from the Germany, uh, their, 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 their filtration system is working for more than one years or so. So, uh, yes, uh, the things are reliable, but it's depend on how your aquifer characteristics and, you know, how the operations of the, the pumping and all those things. So these are interrelated things. And the pollutant type, right? So some pollutants will never biodegrade. Yeah. So if that goes into your soil, you're actually polluting yeah. your soil and filtration. Uh, yeah. Could you go to slide? Uh, yeah. Other so could you go to? Be, sorry. Uh, other phenomena can be also clubbed together along with the bacterial concentration. Uh, so other chemical, uh, chemical uh, or inorganic uh, components can also be clubbed together, and we can see uh, collectively, you know, how uh, the the whole model, you know, uh, behave. Okay. So slide 18, you talk about um, steady, steady flow conditions. Uh, I'm sorry, could you go to slide 12 first, please? Mm -hmm. Hello. So you say that uh, the last line, it says, analytically, it is very difficult to simulate the drawdown. Um, as per 2011, and now it has been 10 years almost. Do you think there has been some changes in the, in addressing this difficulty, or what what is your take? Yeah, there 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 are changes, but I specifically address this particular uh, study uh, because uh, this one is uh, you know as really based on uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, the example uh, of uh, the case study I have took from the New Zealand. So it is related with that. So you know if uh, something is related uh, with the design philosophy, so I you know address this particular study uh, over here. But yeah, uh, there are some uh, even uh, uh, 2018 study by uh, Ray et al. Uh, also said uh, that uh, there are some uh, modifications into the analytical designs uh, approach, uh, you know, taken place. But for uh, different uh, conditions, uh, they have proposed it, uh, not for the pumping well or what I have proposed here. Okay, so the, the point is, I think there has been a lot of new studies on this specific mm -hmm. uh, thing because we use that for uh, the underground taming of floods project in India. And there has been a lot of good studies after 2011. So uh, mm -hmm. that's one thing. And then mm -hmm. um, uh, on slide number 14, would you mm -hmm. go to slide 14? I have a question on the <coughs> pathogens, but I think. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, here uh, you say a lot about the steady state, reaching the steady state, and uh, unsteady state conditions. And your model was based on the steady state conditions. Am I right? Yes, sir. How did you arrive at the steady state condition? Uh, sir, um, I uh, yeah, model uh, both the steady and unsteady uh, flow conditions. And uh, with, uh, and, uh, 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 this is uh, So for the pumping well, I have uh, analyzed the different conditions. I realized that uh, there is not much difference uh, um, in the uh, travel time uh, uh, computed uh, for uh, the. Uh, yeah, yeah, but my, my question was you know, the how would you arrive movement. at steady state? How so, do you arrive at so actually, uh, in, in, in in our vision, uh, what I have uh, found that uh, um, after uh, Mr. Uh, when there is a start of the pumping, uh, the first initially the water is uh, uh, um, taken from the aquifer, and later in the stage uh, the real water enters. So these things, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, happen simultaneously. So this is how actually the uh, unsteady state condition converge finally to the steady state. And uh, with this particular, uh, you know, uh, the uh, outcome, uh, we uh, uh, ultimately decided to go with the steady state because it's, there is no much difference. No, I think my question is again, let me rephrase it. First, uh, how did you arrive at a steady state condition for your model? So, or could you tell me what a steady state is? 
yeah uh, the um, the uh, the flow which is uh, uh, much uh, uh, stable uh, with the pumping and uh, there is no much variation so this is how the steady state we have uh, arrived here and uh, to see the drawdown um, boundary so this is what we have used sir hello yes sir Okay, so just to inform in, in groundwater modeling, steady state is a, a state where the amount of discharge is equal to the amount of recharge and mm -hmm. all the other variables are kept constant. And in an unsteady mm -hmm. state is when you actually pump it. So there is a big difference how you attain steady state. And I, I'm not clear yeah. on that, but uh, maybe when we when we meet, you could you could tell me. Yeah, 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 sure. Sir. And uh, uh, yeah, so I would like to support to this question as well. So we use for this particular analysis uh, uh, imaginary recharge well study where the you know the the uh, the uh, the QP over here and the pumping well over here. So this is how we maintain the you know uh, the uh, uh, the steady state condition over here. Uh, no, steady state is not maintained by this diagram by distance. There is other properties that go into the model. Mm -hmm. How no, you so fill each compartment and how it discharges each compartment. But mm -hmm. yeah, by Thursday we can talk about it. Uh, yes. Can you go to EPARnet and SIBARnet? The last two questions. Uh, SIBARnet, you said it is more better than the EPARnet. And uh, EPARnet, mm -hmm. or, or is it an updated version, my understanding? SIBARnet is better than EPARnet, correct? <laughs> no, 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 not better or something. EPANET is to simulate the hydraulic conditions in the pipe. And uh, EPANET is the, the uh, simulation optimization model, wherein the, uh, the, um, the SPA algorithm uh, with some modifications and uh, the uh, EPA simulation model uh, is clubbed together and uh, then, uh, you know, run nice. Uh, okay. So uh, it's not like a, the EPANET is a EPANET is a, a, a better version of EPANET. Okay. So in both models, you assume uh, or you look at the hydraulic conditions uh, for the field, correct? Because this is you're implementing in the field. You showed some villages and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. uh, in a village, what do you think would be a pressing factor to maintain the hydraulic conditions using these models? Because there is a big assumption in these two models. I think I've used EPANET very far long back uh, but there is a there's a very important assumption mm -hmm. that we use for epanet to maintain the hydraulic conditions and what is that for for the field for the agricultural field um no i i it assumes it assumes it has enough energy access to energy and energy is un, unintermittent so when you wow. apply it to a village okay. you maintain the quality the pressure the hydraulic gradient is the pressure head in mm -hmm. the pipes, it is going to be very expensive. So when you talk about the budgets of EPANET or CPANET uh, mm -hmm. maintaining the hydraulic conditions, uh, mm -hmm. I was curious to know how did you manage the energy budget? Uh, okay, so the last question is page 43. Uh, you compare your model with other models for uh, CPU time. Um, uh, page 43. 43. 43, yeah. Before the, yeah, before that, uh, 42 actually, 42. 42, oh, here. Yeah. Okay. If you do compare your paper against other papers for modelings and other things, uh, mm -hmm. you said CPU time is very, very fast. Am I mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But again, you're comparing papers which is very old, uh, wherein the quality of the computing CPU time also would differ. How mm -hmm. did you, how did you normalize this? Well, uh, sir, uh, CPU time is really not required, I means uh, not a, a factor to compare, but even though, uh, you know, I found it and I, I tried to mention it here, uh, but the most important factor to compare is the number of functional evaluation. And as you said, the old studies uh, are, I have mentioned, but there is a recent study because we are trying to adopt various methodologies and approaches to do that. So in uh, the last year also, there is a uh, another approach in GA where they have used the penalty functions uh, to find uh, the optimum solution. So compared to that as well, uh, you know, this particular model uh, have converged faster. So, so CPU is, uh, you know, is uh, not a factor to consider, but the number of functional evaluation is a time to, uh, is a factor to consider. Okay, yeah, thanks a lot. And the last one was like, uh, you said about water floods and uh, quality. 
mm-hmm. and only during the the peak period uh, you know there is a concentration flush uh, mm-hmm. but also in villages you would get a flush because this this stopped and the it is associated mm-hmm. with villages and all you said uh, mm-hmm. but also during a uh, lean period uh, and mixing of agricultural water coming in mm-hmm. fertilizers and stuff there will be a mm-hmm. concentration also so i'm just curious how that could be modeled because only in a flood peak you show some concentration uh-huh. but okay. studies have shown that even during a lean period there is a mixing between the surface and subsurface water oh i see i see uh, so uh, that i have not consider over here sir only i i try to model in a different scenario that uh, how 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 come if the flood is there and there is a rise in water level so how the how the distance uh, miss the traditional design approaches are going to affect so that is only i have tried to you know demonstrate here yeah thanks a lot thank you sir thank you bakul ma'am yeah um so the first question was on behalf of me too i asked those question so you have a jalyavan mission in your title so i was just wondering how practical your work would be so your work uh, the first part was finding the distance at which the e coli concentrations are low so that uh, you know in terms of supplying water to the people uh, uh, so you need less treatment uh, that's what your uh, work is So, yeah. but looking at the way the various villages are along the river, if mm-hmm. you find a distance for a uh, village, and uh, I mean for for a certain village, and you find the distance, and in between that uh, distance, uh, there's another village coming in, so there's another uh, concentration load coming in. Then, how would you actually look at mm-hmm. it? That is one part of it, and the other one is we usually design the scheme for twenty twenty five years. so how would this uh, uh, your rbs be designed that is this this first maybe i will come to the next question later on okay okay uh, so then that's uh, uh, that's what uh, i have realized that you know whatever we have uh, you know analyzed uh, in uh, in doing this uh, um, uh, research and um, what i have my personal experience while working uh, in the ministry um, so i have realized actually such uh, in such interventions in the design methodologies are required to uh, to to strengthen the uh, you know to the mission so that's why um, i have applied for this project as well and uh, we are in uh, communications uh, you know to uh, to start it but uh, the thing is uh, this require some more uh, you know studies and uh, you know analysis and all together uh, some other components will also involve uh, into the project so uh, but the initiation of uh, the the project uh, we have given the start of ideas related to the hygienic conditions uh, and the uh, the health conditions of, for, for the water what we have we have supplied so as guidelines uh, of the, uh, the the minister of jal shakti and um, the department of drinking water and i have realized this particular factor is really important to point out and um, that's how you know i realized to uh, you know put forward and go ahead with this particular thing but uh, some more um, uh, components uh, will be added into that um i uh, so you- i'm afraid that i mean finally the cost of actually building this well versus actually putting up a water treatment plant from directly by abstracting it from the surface will it be similar or uh, i mean what would be the operation cost of these uh, maintenance cost i mean you have so, your your title says jal jeevan yeah, yeah, yeah. so my my questions come from that point that's true that, it's mm. not about the research which we do but it is from the perspective when you think of jal jeevan mission what would it mean to the mission yeah 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 so actually the cost is really a significant factor so first one is uh, the component i took with the uh, distribution system where we re- we we, we uh, try to reduce the cost of the network but the another one particular thing which is a, a every year cost every day cost of the treatment and all those things and in village areas you have observed that the maintenance and all the supply facilities are not so efficiently or support uh, provided so uh, even in the urban areas uh, urban areas where the treatment uh, goes maybe around uh, uh, 15 to 20 rupees per uh, kld uh, in the villages even even 5 to 10 rupees is also not possible so to to minimize all those things or to to uh, avoid all these particular mm-hmm. constraints 
statement, we propose this particular um, uh, 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 method. And uh, here, the only cost is the pumping cost uh, required. Uh, no other um, uh, other uh, um, means uh, the the operation uh, means uh, other uh, treatment or some uh, other cost involved. Yeah, maintenance is also over there if there is a failure or something like uh, so that cost can be involved. So my part B was uh, we usually projected for twenty years. We build an infrastructure for twenty years and all. So how would this uh, um, RBF function over twenty years? I mean, it's, uh, in a way, it relates to what uh, Pednan said about what is the geology of that yeah. aquifer and all. So how would this work out? Yeah, yeah, this uh, this work um, very very efficiently. Not only in the Western scenarios, uh, as I mentioned uh, about Germany, but in Indian scenarios like uh, uh, the case of Haridwar, even case of New Delhi. So they are still functioning. Even the Haridwar site is around uh, 15, 20 years uh, old, and it is uh, there is no influence of any other uh, factors on the efficiency of the uh, quality of the water is being pumped. So mm, yeah, so it, it, it's really it's reliable. Yeah, over the life of the uh, of the structure. The other uh, question was with your experience. I mean, uh, do even the uh, I mean for uh, uh, designing rural set, uh, water treatment system, not water treatment, but water distribution and all. Uh, how many engineers actually use Epanet? Um, yeah, and uh, the, how many engineers actually use Upanet for their optimization? And uh, next is uh, how many designs have loops in it? Okay. I mean, you you must have a you uh, you with your experience, you must be having an idea. Do you think? Uh, I mean, loops. Actually, uh, actually uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I understood your question. Uh, frankly speaking. Uh, we don't uh, use um, uh, Epanet for the uh, you know the the uh, the distribution supply and, uh, uh, design. We use uh, the the Bentley software actually. Okay. But uh, when it comes to the research, we uh, we use Epanet uh, uh, as a simulation engine because it handles various hydraulic constraints and it's very easy for you know. No, to... no, I'm asking practically. Uh, yeah. If you were to promote, actually in Maharashtra, you have the uh, MJP and all. Mm -hmm. So how many of them actually use this optimization tool? Uh, very few. Uh, yeah. I yeah, very few. I, um, I uh, came across uh, with uh, one of the engineer uh, uh, who was in the, the Bhandup uh, uh, water treatment facility, and he he said uh, he used a Bentley, but he is more reliable on Epanet. So he used to refer the the you know the, the outcome with both the systems. So people are there who use, uh, but we are very few. Are and very the few. other thing is how many actually design loop systems. Are these, uh, I mean, you mentioned about the two or three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, if you have taken a look at many rural supply yeah. schemes, how many of them actually use loops? You know, yeah. Loops is better, but uh, yeah. actually, uh, yeah. But, yeah. That that can be that can that can be uh, uh, that can be more than uh, two or three. Uh, even uh, one of the network which we use we call Exanet, uh, which is a very big network uh, having more than thousand nodes or so. But uh, you know what the purpose of showing this particular uh, you know uh, optimization approach is the number of iteration required to find the global solution, and uh, that's the reason why uh, when it comes to the the big size uh, networks like what. I said exanet uh, or some some uh, uh, other um, other problems. We need some solutions to find uh, the, um, the operations very fast, uh, you know, as compared to the traditional uh, stochastic approaches. So, so um, this yeah. is the maybe we can discuss when we uh, meet. Yeah. Sure. 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 Thanks. So it it will vary. It will vary. Uh, it will vary significantly. Actually, when the number of loops involved in it. Hello. Yeah. Uh, Sudha, I'm done. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Ma uh, Shasa, any more questions? Sorry, it was the earlier hand. Sorry. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, I, so I don't see any more questions. So with this, we come to the end of the seminar. 
and uh, i really would like to thank you sir and on behalf of sitara i would like to ask our head anand rao sir to conclude the session okay uh, so uh, thank you so much dr shende uh, for this talk and it was nice interacting with uh, you uh, and then uh, we'll continue the interaction over this week sure sir sure sure thank, thank you. you so much thank you so much for invitation okay